God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. Be blessed as you listen. So this morning, we want to look at the Bible as we proceed in this service and this year. And I've chosen John chapter 5 as a chapter for consideration this morning. And the title of my message is, Then Jesus Came. Then Jesus Came. Hallelujah. Help me tell somebody, then Jesus came. And tell him, Jesus is coming to you now. I prophesy to you that Jesus is coming to you now. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We receive your word with thanksgiving. And we ask you, Lord, that your word will enter into our spirit. And your word will shape our spirit and shape our mind and shape our body and shape our intellect and everything about us. And Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. Holy Spirit divine, help us with the understanding of your word this morning. As we continue to praise and worship you, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And so John chapter 5, and we start to read Verse 7, and we kind of read backwards today. Verse 7 said, and the impotent man, the impotent man. This is how he is described, the impotent man. A man who found himself to be weak, feeble, without strength, powerless. To be weak in means, needy, poor, to be sick. And this is how this man is described. I don't know how many of us here today have been described like this. But I want to tell you that Jesus is coming, hallelujah, to meet you at the point of your need and to change your life forever. And it says, the impotent man answered and said to him, Sir, I have no man. I have no man. And the fact that this man said these words, that I have no man, showed to me that he has been in expectation for help for so many years that he has sat close to the pool to be helped into the pool. And it appears to me that it became a source of concern for him and that he desired that there should be a man. That there should be somebody who stood by his side, somebody who encouraged him, somebody who helped him. And therefore he said, I have no man. When the water is stirred or troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, while I am coming, while I do all my best to come. Another step in front of me, a step before me. And when Jesus heard this word, and I can picture Jesus broken hearted, that this man, having desired help, sought help, wished for help, hoped for help, that there was no man by his side. There was nobody who could help him. And based off of what the man said, Jesus spoke this word. He said, Arise, take up thy bed and walk. And verse 9, immediately, immediately, the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath day. And so here the story is about a man, if you have not read this story before, about a man who was impotent. And he had been sitting by a pool waiting to be healed, waiting to be saved, waiting to be delivered, waiting to be set free. And in verse 1, it said, After this, there was a feast of the Jew, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And now there is at Jerusalem, by the sheep market, a pool. There was a place in Jerusalem 
by the sheep market a pool. And that place was a source of healing for anyone who found help, for anyone who could get it. And the story goes on in verse 3. In these lay a great multitude, a great multitude. So many people were here because they believed that they could receive healing, they could receive help if they could just get into the water. And there was a great multitude of impotent folk, multitude of blind, multitude of those who were withered or paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. So this many people from different tribes, from different religions, from different geographical locations, from different places, they all gathered for one reason, to seek help off of the pool, to seek healing from the pool, to seek deliverance, to seek salvation. They all had a common mission. And what we find here is that each and every one of them had a desire to be healed. They were not there just passing time. They were there to receive of the Lord. As everyone here today, we all came to church to pray to God, to receive something from God. I'd be surprised if you're here today just to meet a friend. I believe we're all here to meet with God and to receive from God. And so was this many impotent folk and many that were blind and many that were paralyzed. And now think about it. How can a paralyzed man compete with those who are healthy enough to run into the water? It is bad enough to be paralyzed, but again, somebody who is blind, how can he know that the water is being stirred up? And now it is bad enough to be blind. What about somebody who was impotent and could not move any part of his body? But yet, all of these people with grave problems, very serious problems, gathered together hoping that for, by one chance reason, one of them will receive the blessing of God. And as we come together, we all hope the same way. But I'm here to tell you that God does answer every prayer simultaneously. Doesn't matter how you pray, whether you pray in tongue. Or you pray in understanding, whether you pray a local dialect, or you pray in the old King James Version English language, doesn't matter how you pray, whether you pray with your grammar or correct or using double negatives, it does not matter how you pray as long as you call the name of the Lord. The Bible says you will be delivered. So we're not here to mark our grammar. We're not here to look at how correct our English language is. I'm so glad that we have a God that answers prayer. We have a God that understands all language, all tribe. We understand that when we come to God, regardless of how we came, as long as we come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are accepted of him. Hallelujah. Somebody help me give him praise. And so this is a great encouragement for you and me. That we can approach God by the new and the living way, by the blood of Jesus. And call on him in the days of our trouble. And he will hide us in his pavilion and keep us in his temple. Where no man or no devil can hurt you. Hallelujah. As long as you hide under the shadow of the almighty. And so all of these people came together with one mission, like I said. They had a desire to be healed. They had a desire to be blessed. They had an expectation from God. And I want to ask you a question today. Do you truly have a desire to be blessed? Do you truly have a desire to be relieved of whatever issues that plague your life? To be, to be delivered from whatever issue plague your body? To be saved from whatever issue plague your pocketbook? Are you truly willing to be delivered? A man or a woman who is on a mission it's a man that's willing to die for the cause that he believes in. Hallelujah to God. Glory to God. A man or woman who is willing to give up everything to seek that which God has in stock for him. 
a man or woman who is not interested in the alternative but waiting to receive that which God had promised for him. A man or woman who is not willing to be led astray by the good tokens of this world or the deceitful act of the devil but believe God beyond reasonable and all reasonable doubt to know that God will come through for him at the appointed time because it's an on time God. Somebody help me praise him in this house right now. I feel him in this place. And that's the God we believe. Do we have a desire to be delivered? Do we have a desire to be set free? Do we have a desire to receive our healing? These folk, they had a desire to be freed from whatever held them bound. These were impotent folks. These were blind people. These were people who had been weeded on some part or all parts of their body, but yet they felt that we can make it no matter what it is. Someday we will make it. Hallelujah. You can feel that man who is paralyzed and somehow is pushing himself close to the water every day at the edge of the water. And there was no season, no time that was known to them that the angel of God comes in to stir up the water up. But they were there by the side. But I venture, when the water stirs up, I'll be in. I'll be the first person who goes in. But the Bible tells us here, the only first person who goes in get healed and the rest of them gets wet. So there's got to be one person that gets healed of all of them. And they all believed in their heart that they will be the first person who goes in. And there was, there was a determination with these people. There was a great determination. And I believe that's what God desires of folk that are Christian, those who are born again, fire baptized, those who speak in tongues, those who believe they are God. This is what I believe God desires from us, that there, there is an attitude that brings us closer to the presence of God, that says to God, God, if you don't hear me and answer my prayer today, I would not let you go. Until you bless me, I will not let you go. Hallelujah. That is the attitude that we must bring to the presence of God. An attitude of expectation saying to God, I expect you to do something for me. I didn't come here for, for a vain service. I came here to receive from you. I didn't come here to be distracted by any. I came here to receive of the Lord. My prayer is to receive from God before I exit this house. That is the attitude that God wants us to come with. Not an attitude that believes in complacency. God understands, therefore God is going to do it. But God understands. God is, it, it, it wants us to pray as well and to call on him in the days of our trouble to come before him with an act of expectation say God you gotta do this for me I know you can do it Lord do it now hallelujah to God do it now I can no longer wait for tomorrow I've waited for too long Lord do it now hallelujah to God come on help me give him praise I'm excited about these people because I just believe in the attitude of these individuals who couldn't walk, who couldn't see. How can a blind man see the angel of God come and see the water being troubled? Yet a blind man sat right there waiting for the water to be stirred or believing in his heart that one day it's going to be my turn. I will be the next one to receive my healing. My blind sight is going to go away. I will begin to see again. And now, and now the Bible goes on. It said, it said, for for an describing what happened, describing what happens. It said, for an angel of God went down at a certain season. Angel of God went down at a certain season. A season that was not known to them. They didn't know the time. They didn't know when it happens. But yet they were there waiting for a season that they didn't understand. In the same way, brothers and sisters, we pray, we fast. But we lack understanding of the very exact time that God is going to come through for you. And the same reason that we are always ready to receive of God. The same reason that we never give up, but stay solid on the side of our God, that someday, somehow, he's going to come through for me 
in spite of what I'm going through right now. I stayed with him because I know that he will never fail me. He's not a God that goes back on his word. That what he promised that he's going to do, he's going to do it. Regardless of how long it takes. Because he is the ancient of days. Jesus the same yesterday. Jesus the same today. And Jesus the same forever. And that same Jesus, because he is alive forever, when he said anything, he stands by what he said. If he spoke to me, he's going to come through with his word. Hallelujah. Because when I read the scriptures, how he spoke to Adam, how he spoke to Noah, how he spoke to Abraham, how he spoke to Isaac and spoke to Jacob, and how he spoke to David and all of the prophets, and Daniel, and how he spoke to his son Jesus, and how he spoke to all of the apostles and the disciples before us, and he's still speaking today. And that none of them will we say he failed. He had always proven himself. And because I know that God, that whatever he said he'll do, he'll do, then I'm willing to walk the walk with him and go with him all the way. And that's why I would not let the voice of the devil distract me, but always hearing the word of the Lord from behind saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I don't understand what these individuals heard. When they stood by the pool and, and waiting for the stirring of the water. But the Bible say, at a certain season, the angel of the Lord will always come. The angel will always come at a certain season. God will always come when the alarm clock in heaven goes out on your behalf. And that's why there is a set time for God to meet you at the point of your need. To meet me at the point of my need. And therefore, when that time is come, God will always manifest himself. And I believe that 2013 is that time that I've been waiting for. I don't know about you, but I just believe it with every fiber of my bones and my body. That this is that moment that I've been waiting for. It is that time that God has kept me alive for. I know I'm going to apprehend that for which I've been apprehending. I know God is going to come through for me in every area that I've ever prayed. Those who stole my time, my time is coming again in double fold. Hallelujah. Those who took my money, my money is coming again in double fold. Those who took my promotion, my promotion is coming again in double fold. Hallelujah. Those who took my help, my help is coming again in double fold. Those who took my help, my help is coming again in double fold. Somebody help me give him glory. And Bible says in the angel of the Lord... Stirred up the pool and troubled the water. And did what? Troubled the water. Hallelujah. For those who couldn't get in to receive the blessing when the water was stirred, for them the water was troubled. But the Bible says the angel of the Lord troubled the water. And I'm here to tell you today that God is going to trouble your troubles. Uh, is somebody believing here today? I said God is going to trouble your trouble. And all of those things that have troubled you before you came into this year. They better be ready because God is after them. Hallelujah. God is coming after those powers. God is coming after those people. God is coming after them all right now. If I were you, I will give them glory right now. Glory to God. He said, the angel of the Lord troubled the water. And who's then? Then. Now, look at this. He said, then, the first person that steps in after the troubling of the water was made 
whole of what? Whatever disease he had. So anybody who stepped in when the water is troubled received a healing. And now, you, you have to have known that the water is being troubled to step in. And that's why we like the eagle. <clears throat> and I hope that God will give us that anointing. Know what the eagle does, like every other bird, fly and flap their wings, but the eagle doesn't do any of those. God created that majestic animal in bird, and he, he, he understands the wind. And the eagle does have the ability to read the wind. And that when the wind is going south, all the eagle needs to do is to spread out. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hope that somebody understands that you're about to spread out. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. If, if I was that person, I'd give God glory right there. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. You, you're, you're about to spread out. Where you occupy right now is too small for you. You're about to spread out. Hallelujah. What you got right now is too small for you. You're about to spread out. Hallelujah. Where you be kept right now is too small for you. You're about to spread out. Hallelujah. God is about to expand your wings. Somebody give him glory right now. Glory be to God. And the eagle cannot just spread out its wing as it reads the wind. And it hops on it. And it is the wind that carries the eagle. And that's why you say the eagle doesn't flap its wing, just kind of glide up there. You cannot glide if you misread the wind. So this year, you, you got to be able to read the wind. <laughs> Glory to God. And that's why the brother was praying earlier on, like the sons of Issachar, that understand the times. You, you got to be able to understand the visitation of God. And this is why you cannot for any reason misplace your relationship with God. Because where you are going is too important to you. Not only to you, but to your children and your children's children. And I want you to understand that you carry generations on your shoulder. That you cannot fail them. And there will be folk down the road who will be standing on, the, on your shoulder. Because you have made the way perfect for them. And if there is a fight to fight, you got to fight it now. And not make them fight it. If there's a struggle to have, you got to struggle it now. So you, they don't have to struggle with glory to God. If there's anything that has to be done now, you got to do it so that they don't have to do it. There is generation that's dependent on the actions that you do today. And you cannot afford to sell off your birthright. Because of a muscle of meal that you want to enjoy right now. And Moses refused to allow himself the passing pleasure of this world. But rather, he believed God and sacrificed everything so that he may become the person that God has chosen him to be. A leader of his people, a deliverer of his people. The one that comes to set his people free. And that's what God has for some of us here today. And you cannot sacrifice your relationship with God for anything else. It is too important to you and important to your life and important to your existence. And that tells me the reason why these folk were willing to stay the course. And stay in that place until the troubling of the water. 
And the Bible says in verse 5, And a certain man was there that had infirmity 38 years. Now think of it, there's some of you here today who are not 38 years yet. Some of you are, some of you are past 30 years. And someone had lived his life by the pool seeking to be healed for 38 years. And every day of that year, this man was there waiting to be healed by Jesus. When the angel of God came to stir the water. And it said, a certain man had been sick for 38 years. And had been waiting for healing. Now look at how long this man had waited to be healed. How long he had believed God that someday he would receive his healing. Uh, look at how long he had believed for. How long he stayed for. 38 years, trusting that someday his problem was going to be over. Uh, there would have been every reason for him to walk away from God and seek alternative means of curing his disease. But yet he chose to stay with God, that someday God will touch him, God will heal him. Uh, and now Jesus came, then Jesus came uh, while this man was here one day and jesus showed up and jesus looking at the multitude if you go back a little bit the bible says in verse three uh, and there laid a great multitude and multitude means many people uh, and so many people were sitting by this pool to receive their healing waiting for the stirring of the water but somebody caught Jesus' attention. I want to prophesy to you today that you have caught Jesus' attention. Hallelujah. I have. Glory to God. I know, I know his zero in on me. And picture Jesus walking into the midst of everybody. Uh, everybody lining up and some just sitting by the edge of the water and some of them blind couldn't know what was happening and folk telling them there's a man in the crowd uh, and he is healthy his name is jesus of nazareth the one who heals everyone he saves and the one who lays hand and casts out devils and some want to be helping those who are impotent and maybe peradventure they can touch him. Uh, and now picture Jesus zero in on somebody. He knew who he was there for. Uh, it's possible that Jesus came into town just for this individual. Uh, Jesus is here today because of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Jesus is here today because of me. Hallelujah. And when Jesus comes to town, he comes to do some miracles. Uh, yes, I know he's here today to do some miracles. Uh, I don't know what you're expecting from God. Believe today that you have received. Hallelujah. Uh, if you can believe him that you have received, like we read in the scripture, he said, you will not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Are you going to come out of this place today testifying of the goodness of God? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody help me give God glory. And Jesus walking me in the midst of all of the sick people, uh, stepping over others and, and just walking by others, but zeroing on a man who'd been waiting for 38 years uh, and had released his faith, thinking and hoping and, and expecting that someday uh, he'll be healed. Uh, and like we read about him in verse 7, he first of all complained to Jesus, not asking Jesus of anything. And that's why I feel that that is what bothers him so much, that he sat there for so long and nobody could help him. Uh, there was no man, no woman, his father, his mother, his wife, if he had a wife, his children, none of them could help him. All he said to Jesus is that I tried my best, but my best was not enough. Uh, I don't know if you've been trying your best, uh, and you feel your best is not enough. Uh, and I'm telling you, your best is yet to come. Jesus is coming your way. Hallelujah. Jesus is coming your way. Hallelujah to God. Jesus is coming your way. Hallelujah to God. And so zeroing in on this man, Jesus went up to him. Uh, you see, sometimes you go up to Jesus. 
But the last time Jesus comes up to you, what brings Jesus up to you is the power of your faith. If you can release your faith to draw Jesus, in those moments you will not need to find him. He will find you. Hallelujah. Because there's a magnet of your faith that attracts Jesus to yourself. Glory to God. And he, he couldn't move anywhere. He couldn't move himself. The Bible says he was impotent. He had been weeded on some part or all part of his body. And so when Christ came to him and, and Christ only queried him, what, what, what would you, what do you want me to do? Uh, and the man said, I, I, I have been here for this long and I have found no man uh, to help me out and I tried my best. Uh, and Jesus looking at him, not saying much, all he said is take your bed, arise and take your bed and go home. Hallelujah to God. Uh, and that moment was the end of all that he had hoped for for 38 years. Hallelujah to God. Uh, and I'm here to tell you someday it's going to be over. Hallelujah. Uh, all our problems are going to be over. Glory to God. All my attacks are going to be over. Glory to God. All the weapons that the enemy has fashioned against me are not going to be prosper. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come and give God glory. One single day and one single moment changed the life of this man. It didn't have to do with the angel that troubled the water. It didn't have to do with the water. But it had to do with Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man of Galilee. And when he showed up, all he needed to do is speak a word on the Sabbath day. Arise! Arise! Take up your bed and begin to walk. And this man did not rationalize. There was no pastor that tried to stir up his faith. There was no preaching before the healing. But yet he believed that this man, Jesus, had more power than the angels, had more power than the water. He believed that Jesus can override the season. It was not a season for the stirring up of the water. But yet out of season, he got his blessing. Glory to God. Come on, give God glory. Help me give him praise. In this time, she doesn't have to wait for that moment. All you need to do is say, Jesus, this is my time. Hallelujah. Come on, slap somebody by the back of the head. This is my time. Hallelujah. Say it out loud. This is my time. Did I hear somebody say, this is my time. This is my year. This is my month. This is the moment that I've been waiting for. Yes, this is my time. Didn't have to wait for no angels. Some of you are waiting for angels right now. Forget about it. Wait for Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of you are waiting for some miracle walker to come your way. Forget about that. Wait on Jesus. Hallelujah. Let Jesus touch you. When Jesus touches you, you can never be the same again. When Jesus heals you, you can never be the same again. Come on, help me give him glory. Help me give him glory. And as we conclude, this man had been here. And had nobody who was able and capable to help him. But then Jesus came. Because Jesus saw his faith. Jesus saw his face. And Jesus understood his expectation. And how long he's waited. Those who wait on the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. They shall run. They shall not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Only those who wait on the Lord. I dare you to wait on your God. If you've prayed, you've fasted, you've read the word, you've confessed him, now it's time for you to wait on him. Wait on him. Wait on him. He's not going to fail you. He's too good to fail. He's too faithful to lie. He's too righteous to deceive. 
He stood God not to be able to do what he said. Hallelujah. Whatever he said he'll do, he'll do it. And this man, by no means was he qualified to meet with Jesus. But his faith qualified him. Hallelujah. He didn't have to be looking for Jesus all over the place. He didn't have to be crying like, Blind Tamias, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I'm here to tell you today that your blessing is about to locate you where you are. That you don't need to struggle for them. You don't need to hassle for them. It's just going to find you. Hallelujah. Where you're waiting, your blessing will find you right there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody give him glory right now. And that's the power of Jesus. Jesus is turning the table right now. He's turning the table right now. Can you understand how mad the devil would have been that he couldn't hold this man any more day longer than he intended to? For 38 years he had held him, but his day was over that very day that Jesus came. And I'm here to tell you today that the days of the devil over your life is over in the name of Jesus. His days are over in the name of Jesus. Now he's powerless. Now he's impotent. Now he's paralyzed. Now he's blind in the name of Jesus. Come on, help me give God glory. Give him glory right now. Give him glory right now. Give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, 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 give him the praise. Come on, give him the glory. Somebody give him the glory. Somebody give him the glory. Lift up your hand to heaven. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Some of us are here today like this impotent man. That's how he's been described. Because we're helpless. Nobody in this world is able to help us. Nobody has tried to help us. But we believe God that Jesus has come. That Jesus has come to help us. Jesus, you know everything that we've gone through in our lives you know what we are going through right now you know what we ever go through in our lives and lord like you met this man you have met us today and father we announce to the devil we announce to our enemies that our time has come in the name of jesus and the devil's time is over in the name of Jesus. The enemy's time is over in the name of Jesus. Sickness is over. Pain is over. Poverty is over. Lack is over in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Barrenness is over in the name of Jesus. Our fruitfulness is over. In the name of Jesus, our time has come. Our time has come. Our time has come. Our time has come. Come on, give him glory. Come on, give him glory one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, we praise you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a minute. We are closing right now. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188. 
or visit our website at www.jciskin.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for 9.30 a.m. intercessory prayer and 10 a.m. services, or on Wednesdays for 7 p.m. prayer and Bible study. We are located at 396 Vesey Street, off of Branch Avenue in Providence, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is King, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.